Now you're probably wondering, what led to the Ethereum price outbreak in the last few days? Well, Ethereum has gone from $96 to $157 in, in a matter of seven days. That is a major price increase. So let's break it down and talk about why this happened. Thank you guys for joining me today with another video on cryptocurrencies. And today we are going to cover Ethereum and the Constantinople upgrade, which is happening January 16th. Um, so we've seen this massive price increase the last little while. Uh, Ethereum has gone up uh, very large amounts of percent, like 35%, 40%, just craziness, right? And it's some people are saying it's related to the Constantinople upgrade and that it's coming so close. Some people think that it's due to the third inning that uh, Ethereum is reducing its block reward from three Ethereum down to two Ethereum per block. Um, and then others have some other uh, opinions. And so we're going to discuss those. So let's dive in. So as you can see here, we got this, this pump. So Ethereum went from $96 all the way up to $157. Now, if you were holding some or you purchased some at this low end, then you're probably uh, feeling pretty good about yourself right now, especially around Christmas. God knows we all need it. <laughs> now, uh, this opinion from Alex Kruger is actually quite interesting. So, so let's talk about this. So. For those who missed the memo, Constantinople is the next notable upgrade in Ethereum's timeline as the activation of the protocol will bring the blockchain one step closer to serenity, scaling, proof of stake, etc. While there are a number of short-term scaling upgrades pertinent to Constantinople, the launch of the protocol slated to occur on January 16th will cut block rewards from 3 to 2 Ethereum. So heads up miners, if you aren't already aware, um, now's the time to kind of act and decide what you're going to do after Ethereum does this and is it still profitable, etc, etc. So taking the simple theories of supply and demand into account while also looking at the price action of Bitcoin pre and post block reward shifts, many see the upgrades onset as a positive signal for Ethereum. Now make a note of this point. So what Alex has done here is he's compared uh, Bitcoin pre and post uh, block reward shifts. So when there's um, a block reward reduction for Bitcoin, generally Ethereum goes up in price. Now let's move on to the next points and we'll compare it to this point that we just covered. So uh, interestingly, the analyst noted that news regarding the Constantinople fork might not have pushed Ether higher over the past few days. Kruger explained that once the date was decided for the upgrades activation, ETH spiked for a day before dropping for eight days straight as bears didn't abate. Moreover, the block reward reduction was determined on August 31st, indicating that the market shouldn't uh, should have priced this factor in during the past few months. Analysis of historical events of similar proportions didn't help either as a result that previous Ether issuance reductions had on the Ether Ethereum price varied each and every time. So now, now what he's saying is when Ethereum has had block reward reductions, um, the price of Ether would sometimes go up and it would sometimes drop down. And there was no real uh, consistency with that behavior. And so all you can really do is establish an average, but even then that figure really isn't the most um, accurate to cling to. So basically when the Bitcoin halvening occurs, price goes up every single time. It's behavioral in the market. But when the Ethereum block reward halves or, or a third inning occurs, um, it's not consistent behavior. So it's very difficult to tell if the price of Ethereum is going to go up or it's going to go down, that type of behavior. So definitely something to keep in mind um, when you're doing more of a behavioral analysis, right? So now we'll just move on to the next article. So now 
with Constantinople, what upgrades does it bring Ethereum? Okay, so now we're going to talk about the Ethereum improvement proposals and we'll see what is being put in place to, uh, to make things better for Ethereum. Now, EIP-145, a technical upgrade written by two Ethereum uh, developers, uh, details a more efficient method of information processing on Ethereum known as bitwise shifting. So basically they're going to be able to utilize resources um, within the network more efficiently. Now, EIP-1052, uh, authored by the core developers uh, Nick Johnson and Bylica uh, offers a means of optimizing large-scale code execution on Ethereum. So again, more uh, resource optimization. So, um, which is which is really good. They're going to be able to execute uh, smart contracts basically more efficiently. So, uh, EIP twelve eighty three which was written by Johnson, this proposal mainly benefits smart contract developers by introducing a more equitable pricing method for changes made to data storage. So when they're storing data, say for a variable, or they're taking data into a list for a smart contract, um, it will be done uh, for less uh, cost of gas. So if you are a smart contract developer or you're interested in you know trying that out, basically you'll be able to uh, store variables or, or lists of data on the blockchain for a cheaper amount of gas. Um, and then there's EIP 1014. Created by the founder of Ethereum himself, Vitalik Buterin, the purpose of this upgrade is to better facilitate a certain type of scaling solution based upon state channels and off-chain transactions. So again, um, Vitalik has always been talking about uh, expanding Ethereum, so uh, allowing for the scaling to occur so that it can be used more, more uh, widespread among individuals. And uh, this is one of the updates that, he's, uh, that they're putting in place to help with that uh, scaling. So EIP-1234, championed by AFRI, uh, release manager for major Ethereum client parity. This upgrade is the most contentious of the batch, reducing block mining reward issuance from three Ethereum down to two, uh, as well as delaying the difficulty bomb for an additional uh, period of 12 months because it was previously delayed uh, before. So again, this is what it's bringing. This is what the update is bringing. bringing. And uh, most people are looking at the block reward and the fact that it is decreasing. But I will say personally that since um, it has been a bear market, they, they still have been pushing out these updates. And so from uh, an investor standpoint, when you see a project that is still um, working hard and developing and putting effort in to the project to, uh, to make it more successful, um, even when it's not necessarily very profitable, that is a very key thing um, for an investor, right? It's progress, it's um, you're seeing work being done, the things are getting optimized, things are getting better, your investment uh, is improving. So the next article that, that kind of caught my mind was uh, an interesting way to kind of look at um, the projection of price in the future for Bitcoin, for Ethereum, and, and such like that. So now this is from Bobby Lee, so Charlie Lee's uh, brother. Now, he says, when I started in 2011, so when he started in cryptocurrencies, daily global output was at $36,000. And what that means is uh, $36,000 per day were spent on energy to mine cryptocurrency. Okay. Now in 2015, this went uh, to $1.8 million just to the cost of energy. Okay. Today we are at $12 million, uh, which means that globally hash power keeps going up. Uh, using up to $12 million in electricity costs. Now, when that happens, the price of cryptocurrency also uh, increases over that time as well because it costs more to mine it, right? 
Now, the BTCC co-founder went on to note that if the Bitcoin network's hash rate continues to grow non-linearly, coupled with 2020's block reward halving, um, 900 BTC a day, the price of the asset will be pushed up to new heights. Doing some napkin math, he noted that if the Bitcoin miners use up $54 million worth of electricity a day, Bitcoin could easily see the $60,000 price level that he mentioned earlier. So that's kind of an interesting way to look at this because I've, I've never come across some sort of analysis that, that went and said, hey, you know what? This is the amount of power we're currently consuming. When this increases, then this is the price of Bitcoin, right? It's always been, um, you know, based on volume, based on price, based on updates and having. But this is a really interesting way to look at it is by uh, scaling it according to the amount of electricity that is burnt from the miners. So which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, I... I mean, that's also going to be interesting for Ethereum because Ethereum is going to be moving to proof of stake with the new Serenity protocol that is is, def is, is coming. Um, I think it'll be as part of the Casper update. Uh, but again, we will we'll see shortly. So anyways, let me know what you guys think of this update. Are you bullish on it or are you bearish? Do you think it's going to blow up? Um, are you guys going to start procuring some Ethereum? Let me know. I would love to hear about it. And if you guys have any awesome experiences or some wicked gifts that you guys got during this Christmas season, uh, let me know. This is awesome because uh, Christmas is a wonderful time and I hope that you are all enjoying it with your families and having a blast. And if you were really excited about some gifts, I hope you get the ones you're looking for. <laughs> otherwise everybody enjoy your holidays we are coming up to the new year and i am pumped for it all right so thank you guys so much for tuning in and as always stay regular constantinople constantinople